The Kentucky Beef Council and Kentucky Living Magazine proudly present Executive Chef Dr. Michael Riggs for the Lean Beef Cooking Demo. Good evening. Everybody doing good? Okay, you're off to a good start, so all I gotta do is keep the pace going. Right? Okay. Uh, what Allison referred to is that we are gonna do a dish called beef bourguignon. Now, if you're in Paris or France, you call it bouffe. And I made a mistake a couple of years in Paris calling it beef bourguignon, and I got some really bad looks from the waiter. So I've worked on that over the years. But beef bourguignon is a peasant dish. Its history comes from the Burgundy region of France. And just like in America, it comes from the concept of one pot cooking. So the whole idea of that is these dishes were created by cooking what was available at the time by the people, what they had most, most to them. One of the things we talk about in the culinary world is what grows together goes together. So if you're in a part of the world where they have beef, and uh, the Burgundy region of France is also known for its mushrooms and its cheeses and its wines as well, it would make sense to use those ingredients to create this dish. So it was a way of taking beef and cooking it for an extended period of time in Burgundy wine. I have a sign above my kitchen that says I like cooking with wine. Sometimes I even put it in the food. <laughs> so we're going to start by sautéing some bacon. You can't go wrong whether you're in France or whether you're in Bowling Green. Bacon's bacon. Okay? So we're going to sauté that. One of the things we do when we sauté is we heat our pan first. The reason you want to heat the pan first is you don't want to put food into a cold skillet. You want the skillet to already be hot. So we're going to render the fat off of this, which basically means we're going to cook it a little bit, and then we're going to get it where uh, we get the grease off of it. Then what we're going to do is when that's done, I'll pull that out, and I will remove all the fat, the grease, and I'm not going to throw it away. Don't worry. I'm going to use it. Okay? It goes back into the dish. So basically just warming this up. Now, the beef I've got is Kentucky Brown beef because when I buy meat for our program, I use a butcher on the bypass called the fatted calf. Ryan does a tremendous job when he does that. And uh, he uses all Kentucky Proud products. He tries his best to get only meat from Kentucky if he can. And so I appreciate that, kind of working with him on that. So that's where I get mine. So we're going to pull this out. You know, if this wasn't dinner, I'd be looking for some breakfast right now. <laughs> so I'm going to put that back in there. Now I'm going to save that at the same time. Now, we're going to take our beef, which is lean beef, because we don't want a lot of fat content. We got enough fat with the bacon. We kind of got that covered. So we're going to take that, and we're going to lightly coat that in flour. And the reason why I cut that flour is that it's going to keep it from sticking to the pan. So it's going to help sear in the beef. Now, what happens when we put this back in, and this is where I add the bacon fat back in. This is the good part, is that that's going to start to stick to the bottom of the pan and in a few minutes. Once this just gets lightly brown, I'm not going to cook this all the way because part of the process of making a good stew, for those of you who like to make them, is a long, slow simmer, right? Got to put it in the broth. So once we brown this, I'm going to pull it back out and put a little salt and pepper on it at that point because I want to flavor it, but I don't want the salt and pepper to burn out while it's being brown. I want to flavor it when I bring it back out. So we're going to move that around a little bit. Now all the good stuff that's left in the bottom of the pan when you're done makes really good what the French call fond. And what we in the South call gravy. Okay? That's the good stuff. So we really don't want to cook this long because it's going to cook, following the recipe, the first amount of time it cooks is a solid hour. It's when it's all submerged in this red wine that has garlic and tomato paste and margarine and all that kind of stuff that makes you wish you would cook faster. But a good stew you have to cook the meat slow because you don't want to overcook it. You really want it to be very tender. You really want that taste. So I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to sprinkle that with a little salt and pepper. Without salt, basically you're not going to taste anything else. So salt gives everything a kick. And that's what gets it started. That's why you find salt in all kinds of recipes. Okay? So here's the bacon fat we've been waiting for. So we're going to put that back in there. And I'm going to start adding all the good stuff. Once you get everything started, this is a really simple dish, okay? This is the best part right here. Now, I'm going to add that tomato paste, and this is just steam coming off of there. It's still hot weather, it's just steam, so that was kind of hot. A little marjoram in there, and we're going to let that cook. So we've got tomato paste that's mixed in with this burgundy wine, 
that's got bacon and bacon fat. Sounds kind of healthy, doesn't it? Start with lean beef, so we got the least lean beef thing covered. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add baby carrots, and I'm going to add in pearl onions. You can buy them this way. Okay. Think about working on a farm anywhere in the country that you've got root vegetables. Everybody plants a garden, so these things are really available on a regular basis. So we're going to let those cook for a while. Okay. And what we're doing is that we're putting the root vegetables in first because they take the longest to cook. Once this is all cooking, then basically I set it on the side, put a top, and about an hour later I'm going to come back. Okay? It's going to thicken up because that flour is now going to mix in with the, with the wine and all the other flavors, and that starts to create that thick sauce because we use flour in the culinary business to create what we call a roux, which is a thickening agent. At this point, uh, after this is cooked for an hour, and I'm doing the fast forward thing here, right? Okay, so it's imagine it's been an hour. Y'all been sitting around watching whatever, Julia Child's cooking, okay? And so I'm going to come back, and right before it's done, you can smell that. Then I add the mushrooms. The mushrooms are not going to take about 10 or 15 minutes. Now, I want to put a lid on this because it's the stew, and I want to trap that heat, okay? This smells pretty good right here, doesn't it? And this is the five-minute version versus the two-hour. Yeah. So from beginning to end, it's about an hour and 45 minutes, maybe two hours. And the thing about a good bourguignon is if you have a glass of burgundy and a, and a loaf of hard French bread, you're good to go because you can bite on the steak and sop up the gravy. As we grew, where I grew up in Carolina, that's what you did. You sop it up. I hope you enjoyed your bouffe bourguignon. All right, thank you.